I've just seen there's one. They got a funny little mouth along the side of the river. Oh, a little bit of money. That pig. A bit. Andy's fishing and wild cook. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's day two of my jungle hike, my overnight trip. I've just seen a little spider inside my tent. He's only a tiny little guy. Cruising along, he's trying to get away from me, so. The little air pillow is, um, yeah, really great. It's the first time I used the camp cot. I thought I could get away with not using a ground mat, but to be honest, it's, um, yeah, really quite hard, especially on the face when you're trying to lay down on it. Um, and also the edges, I'm, I'm quite tall. It's actually not wide enough for me. Um, if I lay on my back, my elbows touch the side. And if, I'm, if I'm on my side, my knees, they're always on the edges, so I definitely need the, um, the ground mat. The mosquito net is great. Um, yeah, not one mosquito came in. It's a little short, but you know, uh, there you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm touching the end. And this is also a little bit short as well. There's my view. It's, um, yeah, nice waterfront view. It's really cool. Yesterday we had a really good, um, good little fish. Oh, I found a couple of big, big barramundi in a water hole um, just down that way a little bit. So I reckon we'll have some breakfast and go and see if we can catch those guys. I had, oh, I don't know, I think three or four, three or four times they hit the lure. What I was going to say yesterday, I don't think I said it. They, they were reaction strikes which means that the fish were hitting the lure because it's right in front of them. Um, and they had, they had two hooks each on the lures. But when I changed to a soft plastic with a single hook that's hidden inside the plastic, they were much more aggressive. They actually put it like, got it in their mouth. I actually hooked one um, and then managed to snap it off. I got the plastic back. And then yeah, caught a mangrove, a really nice mangrove jack for dinner last night. So that was really cool. But I've, um, yeah, I brought a special treat for breakfast, which I think oh, I'll have right now. It's too short. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't have a very good night's sleep at all. Just, yeah, just <sighs> kept waking up. I had to keep, keep rolling over. Um, laying on something hard for half an hour makes it sore. So yeah, anyway, let's get, let's get going. So you guys fell over. <laughs> That's not the right. Oh, look how nice it is out here. Got lots of birds, um, lots of little twittering birds. Oh, see some nutmeg on that tree. I'll see if I can get one of those down for you. They're, they're actually a native nutmeg. Before there was wampu pigeons and oh, I had someone doing some gardening just over this way before as well. I'm pretty sure it was the orange-footed scrub fowl from yesterday. I actually managed to film one. They're, they're quite rare to film. But yeah, he was sort of raking up the grass. Uh, leaf litter, sorry, not grass. Very little grass in here. Uh, these are actually a really common tree. There's, there's one. I don't think they're ready yet. Let's see if that one's better formed. Uh, yeah, no, he's... Um, Still got a long way to go before I can open him up. But yeah, that's, that's native nutmeg there. That one, that one. Oh yeah, there we go. Nutmeg has like a, they call it an ar aril? Ariel? Yeah. See that, that red thing there? It's, it's, it looks really quite alien. Hmm, it's probably a little underdeveloped still. Now, from what I've read, I can actually eat that, that red thing. I might try just a little bit of it. And later on when the seeds, oh, it's all kind of sticking to it. Later on when the seeds fully developed, there's a little bit. Tastes a little spicy, a little bit like nutmeg, which, yeah, this is nutmeg. Hmm. But I think that has to um, develop a little bit more and then you have to dry it and grind it up. 
but that's cool. That's actually the first time I've um, managed to find one of these that's, um, yeah, in seed. <coughs> mm, a little spicy in the back of the throat. These are the lemon myrtle leaves I found yesterday. Just find them along the side of the river. Um, you notice them because you brush up against them and they, they smell really nice. Okay, let's turn that down to a simmer. Let that go for a couple of minutes. Okay, whilst that tea cools down a little bit, I'll show you the fishing gear I brought. I promised you yesterday that I would show you today, so yeah. Start with the, the rod and reel, so Daiwa Triple B and a Concept E spinning uh, bait casting reel. Then I've got my trusty knife as always. Then we've got two bags of spider prawns. I thought I'd use them, but I haven't actually used them yet. Then we've got Samaki Boom Bait Bomb Shad, that's the one that caught the fish yesterday. And then in this little box here, we've got a bunch of little hard bodies and some assorted hooks. I've got eel hooks in there and some little tiny bait fish hooks. That's the lures as far as they go. Um, it's pretty, pretty, um, it'll, it'll do a range of fishing. I just wish I had a weedless popper. I do have a couple little poppers in there. Then I've got an eel line. Nice, nice heavy duty with just a single hook on it. Some sinkers for adjusting the soft plastics. Then we've got pliers for getting hooks out and changing split rings. And then my line cutter and a file for sharpening, sharpening the hooks. Now you'd think that would be enough, but not for me. I have to have a second reel in case something happens to that reel. And a second rod in case I break that rod. Because I have broken this one, oh, I think twice now. And yeah, once you break it, they're hard to fish, so you've got to fix them. So yeah. That's all the gear that I've taken. And again, it's probably these two things I, I probably will never use on this trip. Um, and I don't use them most trips if I take take second. And then for clothes, I've got the long pants that I'm wearing. You want long pants because... Oh, March flies are getting me again. Um, you, you're crashing through bush, you're going through lantana, you're going through scratchy vines. So yeah, long pants are a must. Then I've got my camo shirt my night shirt two pairs of socks and that's it <laughs> that's all the clothes i've i've got i've got my shoes my hiking shoes but that's pretty much um in the last two episodes yes yesterday or last week's episode and this episode i think that's all i've got in there i've got some salt in a in a bag in here somewhere which i haven't used yet but yeah we'll see if we use that um and then I've still got a couple of apples in there, um, other protein bar, and what else? Oh, a couple more carrots as well. So there, yeah, that's that's pretty much everything I've got on the trip. Oh, let's see, hang on, I've got this camera, I've got my head camera, I've got a 360 camera, I've got a zoom camera, my phone, and um, satellite phone. So I use my phone with my satellite phone, otherwise I'd leave my phone at home. Now you've seen everything that's on the trip. <laughs> okay, that tea looks ready, yeah. That's a nice color for it. I've managed to knock this over like twice already. So that's why it's not quite full. Mm. Mm. Fresh tea out of the bush is, is actually really nice. It's a, yeah, it's a mild lemony sort of um, flavor, but not, not um, acidic. It's a non-acidic lemon flavour. <laughs> oh, it's really still hot. I could probably use these guys for bait as well. Little lizard, skink. But they're a lot harder to catch than the flies, so... I'm going to stay with the flies. Hey, okay, they're cute little guys. I didn't mention that before. I've actually got a little bit of oil in the container here. I use that to cook my fish and I'm using it to 
cook my breakfast. That's actually a little too hot. Yeah, first thing I'm gonna do is chop up a bit of an apple. You guys can't see from there, can you? Because the water's too bright. Ah, that's better. Ah. So yeah, just, whoops. No, it's gonna be too hot. I'm gonna turn that off. So yeah, chop up an apple into, oh, let's see, just little random squarish sort of shapes. I'm just doing a crisscross pattern here. And then, and just drop them straight into the pan. And what I want to do is actually caramelize. Now, if I had sugar, I'd put it in there as well, but I don't, so that's okay. So you're probably thinking to yourself, that's not really a, a special breakfast, and you'd be right. What I'm gonna do is make up some pancake mix. <laughs> this is a um, yeah special treat I thought I'd I'd bring along for the trip. I was thinking two to three days out here, and yeah, this this will last me. Uh, doesn't say how many servings are on here, but yeah, there's a fair bit of mixture in there. So today's breakfast is pancakes. I used to have this as a kid a lot on camping trips. Let me know, have you, have you had <laughs> pancakes in a container on camping trips or even at home? Pretty simple, you just add water until it reaches, uh, I'm going to say not quite the top. I'm going just above the sticker there. I want a little air bubble in there so that I can mix it. Of course you want to get all the, the dry bits in the corners here. Okay, I think that's ready. Oh, I just dropped them all! Oh no! Oh, we'll save them. That's all right. It's mostly just leaf litter there. Yeah, someone needs to work a better way to make the handles on pans. Look at that. That's just, yeah, someone needs a better way. Anyway, oh, it's frustrating. I've turned that stove down to lowest heat possible. Let's see if we can get a pancake. Oh, to not stick. Actually, these might be more pikelets than pancakes. <laughs> Tastes pretty good, I reckon. Mm. There's actually quite a lot of sugar in that, I think. And also some baking soda. I can taste a bit of a tang. Hmm. Have a look. Those bubbles are probably from the baking soda. I was afraid of this. <clears throat> Being such a thin pan, yeah, it's all stuck on there. So, hmm. Not sure this is going to work out, and oh, I think I think because they put extra sugar in there, yeah, that's what it is. Oh, it's all stuck to the bottom of the pan. So yeah, my pancakes, I will eat them, but they're going to be hard to cook and even harder to get off. Sort of a pancake, and yeah, the thin pan having a really hot spot in the center is not helping at all. So I'm not giving up that easily. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I've got quite a large quantity of peanut oil here. Hopefully enough to cover the bottom. Do a double saucepan. That should make the heat dissipate around the whole pan and cook more evenly because I think that's what the problem is. But yeah, the heat's going through two pans. Anyway, let's try the original pancake. Hmm, not too bad. It's got a slight burnt taste to it in places. Goes nice with that cooked apple though. Hmm, yeah, totally edible this. Hmm, yep. I think I'll be more relaxed when I'm moving and they're not biting me so much. Sitting in one spot, they tend to come and find you. Hmm, got another one. <laughs> I think it might be a problem with the titanium. It's not the heat spreading out because now there's definitely no hot spot there. But yeah, it's just sticking to the titanium. All right, titanium is no good for making pancakes. Let's have a look at this one. Look at that. So it's definitely transferring the heat better. But yeah, it's still sticking like that there. I can't, I can't even get that off at the moment. So that one didn't turn out too bad, but if you have a look at the other side, they all just break apart and stick to the pan. Oh, and here's another thing what I want to do today. In the last episode, I was in a water hole mm, one and a half kilometers downstream, and I saw a crocodile. 
I want to try and film him today. I want to try and catch the barramundi that taunted me and I want to try and film this crocodile. Crocodiles are notoriously hard to film, in, especially in a setting like this, because as soon as they see you, they usually gently just go straight down. This one yesterday, he must have been half out of the water and I think I walked up on it maybe five, six meters away from it, like I didn't see it. And it got a fright and it just went right through the water hole. That's not normal because I startled him. If he's being sneaky, they can have this, like literally like that much, their eyeball or two eyeballs just above the water line. Like their heads are that shallow that you, yeah, <laughs> there's only two little lumps sticking above. Um, I'm hoping he'll be out of the water, but yeah, we'll give it a shot. Um, that would be cool. It is a little scary finding crocs in the jungle like this. I've seen one before, I don't know, maybe a year ago, a year and a half ago. Um, but he wasn't nearly this far up. This is, yeah, another five, or oh, probably eight kilometers up from where I saw that last one. So yeah, they're moving further upstream and into fresh water. No matter what I try, you can see how the black is all around. That means it's burnt sugar. So no matter what I try, I'm not going to get these to work. You need a like a heavy copper based pan, I think, for these. And also, I, I looked at the packet, there's 17% sugar. Way too much sugar. This is probably the best one I've made. That's the front side, but yeah, there's the back side. So yeah, nice and fat this one. Whoops, going to drop it. They turned out okay, but yeah, I probably won't do it again. I'm going to leave camp set up and try and film this crocodile and catch those barramundi. So I don't think anyone's going to come by here. I've actually never seen anybody in here on all of my trips in here. I don't know how many trips I've done in here, but it's quite a lot. So, yeah, I think my stuff will be pretty safe. I'm in camp, just about ready to go. And right out in the middle of the pond here, I see two decent sized fish. I, I can't make out what they are. So what we might do is go around here and see if we can catch those before we go anywhere. So yeah, nothing's, nothing's easy out here. Everything's uh, all overgrown and yeah, really, really bushy, jungly. I have heard something moving out here as well. Let's see if there's a goanna or, or maybe a water dragon or something. You can hear something on the other side of the bank. There he is, there's a goanna. Oh, he's fast and he's gone. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, let's see, I can't see those fish, but they were pretty much right out in the middle here. Let's give him a shot. Yeah, wish I could see them, but I can't. So it's just blind cast out into the middle. I won't waste too long here. I'd really want to go back to the other pond where the big fish and the crocodile is. And there's a thing. If there's crocodile, if there's barramundi in a water. Oh, that was a looker. Oh, here he is, here he is. Oh, little barramundi, got him! Oh, <laughs> first cast of the morning. Oh, he messed that up. Yeah, I was gonna say, if there's um, barramundi in a waterway, then there's more than likely that there's crocodiles. Oh, that was cool. First cast. Didn't hook him. I think that, oh, I think he's still there. I think he's still there, we'll cast over him. Oh, right on top of him. I oh, know, that's a rock. What is what is this here? There's something else. Oh, no, don't want it. There's actually a half a dozen fish there. And oh here he is. Oh another little barramundi. That could have been the same one. Oh, I think once they've they've tasted it or what you know, got like whacked it and figured out it's not alive they won't hit it again that's what happened yesterday they um they hit it but they'll only hit it once no it doesn't look like it well um yeah go to the 
The Crocodile Hole. I'm, I'm renaming that hole the Crocodile Hole. My guess it's 7.30 in the morning. And the good thing is, we're only a kilometre hike from the fishing spot. So I've got my rod, I've got my little bag of goodies. And uh, yeah, I reckon, well, what I really would like to do is film that crocodile. I think this is the start of the big water hole. Yeah, I'm gonna sneak around a little bit, see if we can see that crocodile. It's, um, it's about a kilometre long, this water hole. It's huge. So I don't see anything just here. Let's go in the shade of the bushes and um, yeah, do some sneaking. This is the exact spot where I saw it yesterday. I'm going to try and sneak up and see if he's there. I, I doubt he'll be in the same spot. Don't see anything down there. Right there is where he was. Yeah, no, I don't see him. I won't waste too much time on it because, yeah, the chances of me spotting him is like maybe 1% or something like that at the best. So, yeah, I think we'll just concentrate on fishing. I haven't spotted the crocodile yet, but on the other side of the river, there's a fish sitting right in the edge of the shadows. Let's see, I'll get the zoom camera out and you can have a look at him. And here's a big pig. That is a boar. We're focusing on fish and crocodiles at the moment. Yep, there, I might get a shot through there. There he is. Yep, just got him. Just walked straight past me. <laughs> hasn't, hasn't noticed me at all. Here's that barramundi. I'll zoom right in on him. We should be able to get a pretty good view of him. Oh, that's close to my zoom extent there. There he is. Sitting right off the edge of the shadows, and he is oh, a good 45 50 meters away. Doubt I'll get a cast that far across. Yeah, I think that's going to be unfocused. Anyway, I'll keep an eye out for the crocodile and more fish. This is the spot where I caught the mangrove jack in the last episode. Can't remember where I was, I think maybe, yeah, down here. There's a nice bunch of weeds there and a couple of rocks. We'll have a flick here. Lure of choice, the same one I got the fish on yesterday, is a 5 inch bomb shad in nuked chicken by Samaki. It's got a weedless hook, I think it's a 6.0 and about a 7 or 8 gram bit of lead in front of it. Let's see, this actually worked yesterday where the lures with two hooks failed I got oh oh straight away straight away oh Jack Jack oh he did hit it but then he went off it oh first cast <laughs> oh it seems to be a bit of a theme today I need to get him to stick that was cool straight away he went for it okay let's try out here there we go. Yeah, I'm not even going to try for that one on the other side until he either comes closer to me or I get to the other side. And today I will. I, um, I'm going to go all the way around this water hole and fish any little spots. Oh, there he is. There he is. He's looking. No, doesn't want it. Oh. Yeah, fish any spots that I can get, get into. And it's a little bit precarious. I'm literally leaning over this water. Just up against this, this actually it's a palm tree. Hmm. Who would have thunk it? Let's try out here again. Oh, underhanded cast. Try and clear that, that weed. Nope, we're gonna go through it. There we go. We might have to keep moving. But that was cool. First cast he had a go at it. So anything from here on, I haven't fished, I didn't fish it yesterday. So hopefully we'll get into some new country with some good fish always looking out for mr crocodile and fishes i keep moving along here and it's so hard to find anywhere to fish you've got all the vines here you've got overhanging trees if i was on the other side of the bank i'd want to fish here but now i'm here i just can't like, I, like just trying to get access down here look at this you just can't do it 
Check out this bearded dragon. I was just about to put my hand on this branch. And there he is just sitting there. Hello little dude. What are you doing? Chilling out because it's too hot to do much else, hey? Let's see if we get a better shot of him. There he is. Or water dragon, sorry. Water dragon, not bearded dragon. They got a funny little mouth on him. Actually that's not his whole mouth, his mouth is huge. I had one run at me before. Mouth open across the water. <laughs> it was quite bizarre. Hey? See how close we can get to you. That camera's now 40, 40 centimeters away. <laughs> and he's gone. That was cool. I've got a shot here, it's less than ideal. Just gives me a little window. The bank is really slippery and steep. And yeah, I could go down there any second. Let's see, I'll get a cast out through here. Okay, just have to fish where I can at the moment. It um, looks a little shallow here as well. And because I got too much sun yesterday, I'm wearing the, the shirt. Oh, but that makes me sweat even more. Oh, Barramundi right here, right here. Not ideal, I'm going behind him. Oh, little one, little one, not the one I saw. Oh, that's a mangrove jack. Oh, that wasn't the barrow I saw. That was a mangrove jack, he just came out of go at it. There's the barrow, there's the barrow, he's out wide. Okay, I'll get a shot at him here. Get it right in front of him. Oh, right on him. Right on him. Oh, and he got it. He got it. Yes. Oh, <laughs> what a rocket. Oh, that was a rocket fish. <laughs> oh, that was cool. Just shows you, even if it's a little bit tough, if there's a spot, give it a go. Man, did he mess that up. <laughs> that was the one I actually tried to cast first at. Cast back behind him, Mangrove Jack hit it, and then he went out there and yeah, got a got a nice whack. Imagine if I could fish like every overhang and every bit of water in here, I think the fishing would be insane. But with there being crocodiles in here, I don't see that happening at a, at any time at all. Because I'd have to carry in a, a raft or a, some sort of little canoe or something. And I do not feel safe now that I've seen What's in here? Oh, there we go. There's a mangrove jack looking again. He's not going for it, but... And it might be time to move. Oh, there he is. What is he? Mangrove jack going behind him. Oh, he's interested. No, he's not interested. He looked at it and turned, but he's not going to grab it. Mangrove jack have extremely good eyesight, and um, if he's followed that once before, he won't hit it he'll follow it but he won't hit it okay here's a spot i think i can squat down and fish there's a few rocks all through the water here and there could be some fish oh i see a little fish right in front of me here a little barred grunner maybe let's go as far over as we can there we go did i mention the march flies are pretty nasty again today have a look at them there we go got one there's about six there. Oh, hang on. There's a fish just swam right in front of me there. He's going that way. Okay, let's see. He looked like a decent fish. Like a mangrove jack again. Have I mentioned how hot it is? It's um, at least 31, maybe 32 degrees. And about 80, 90% humidity. It's horrendous. It's, um, yeah, it's actually starting to go full overcast, so we might get some rain. This is actually one of the creeks I was going to explore but yeah, it looks too small and too dry. So I'm gonna to stay to the main creek and um, yeah, we're at the back of this water hole now. Go around it and fish up the other side, see if we can get that, that big barrow that we saw sitting out in the middle there. I'm telling you, this is hot, hard work. If you ever come over a mound of dirt like this in Australia, it's um, the orange-footed scrub fowl nest. A lot of people think it's the bush turkey, but they have a much smaller mound. The scrub fowls come back year after year, and this is probably about 20 years worth of build-up right here. And check out where they are. They've got waterfront living. 
I tried to find that spot where the barrel was, but it looks like he's gone. So now I'm actually hugging this tree here, hanging over the water. That's straight down there. So let's we'll see if we can get something from here. I've literally got one arm either side of this tree. Oh, it's the only place I could fish on this side so far. <coughs> But I will tell you something interesting, the um, the forest, despite me being hot and bothered and attacked by March flies, it smells really nice. There's um, dry leaf litter which has got a faint smell and then there's some flowers that are really sweet. So even when it's a little bit hard going you can still find cool things to appreciate. Check out what I found, it's a nice little snack. These are called brambles, they're um, like a little raspberry. They're much shorter and they, they tend to live like literally, that's a bit unripe. Mm. They tend to live right in the middle of the river where they get sort of smashed by the, the high water. But they are refreshing. They're um, full of vitamin C and really tasty. Mm. See if there's any more. No. A couple of unripe ones over there. Oh. Such a nice little snack. We're almost back at camp. I'm not the only one that thinks it's hot. Check this pig out. He's about five meters in front of me. Hey pig pig. Hey pig. Pig. He's deaf. Hey pig. He is completely deaf. That pig, I am now four, three meters away from him. Oi! Oi! Pig, pig! Yeah, that, that pig is completely deaf. Let's um, see if I can throw something at him. I don't want to be too close to him when he takes off because he might have a go at me. This is a first, a wild pig that's completely deaf. I've never seen this before. Watch this, I'm going to throw a stick at him. Huh, that didn't work either. Oh, what are we going to do with this guy? He's right where I want to walk. Hmm, I'll get a rock. There we go. It's not a big rock. Oh, now he's onto something. Hey, come on. There you go. There he goes! See ya, pig! <laughs> oh, he won't come back out. No, he's in the bushes. How wild is that? I've never got that close to a pig. I reckon he's 100% deaf. He, um, I was yelling at him. He did not move. <laughs> that go is hanging around camp. Let's see if I can film him. It'll be just part of his back. Where is he? Oh, there he is. That's him there, the, the dotty thing. That's his tail right there. There he goes. That's about as much as I'm going to get of him, I think. Yep, he's gone. Oh well, I tried to film him for you. It's just not easy out here sometimes. About midday it's hot again and pancakes really aren't a good good breakfast so these are the, the carrots I've got left over. Let's see if they give me some energy. It's a nice spot. But yeah, hot. Just trying to focus here. He's got something in his mouth. I'm not sure what it is. I think he's got a fish. Try and get in there as close as I can. 
think that's an Azua Kingfisher. I'll have to look him up. He's got that white dot near his ear. Oh, there's a dragonfly. Hmm, cool. Things you see while you're having a snack. Guys, that's it for me. I've only got an apple and a pack of noodles, and I don't want to spend another night here. It's mm, a bit after two in the afternoon. It's about a six-hour walk out, so I'll have to see you next episode. Can be tough in here, but it's interesting and fun. Anyway, I'll catch you next time. If you're still here, I've picked out a special video just for you. Check it out.